Hello YouTubers, uh, this is another video where we uh, start exploring uh, some of the most recent uh, software development tools that is uh, very innovative in and of itself. There are very similar products out there, but this one is very special because it comes in with uh, a lot of bells and whistles that uh, makes the development experience in general much, much easier and much, much uh, more interesting from a collaboration standpoint, from a, a, a usability standpoint. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you today about a tool that could actually um, um, change how we onboard software engineers to new teams. It's 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 a very interesting tool. I'm gonna walk you through uh, what's going on here. But let me let me roll back a little bit and and start to tell you what what are we talking about today and where did that come from. Um, Today, I wanted to talk to you about a, a new development tool uh, that Microsoft just announced in Microsoft Ignite, which is a, an annual event where Microsoft starts showing a case of so many different products. Could be software, could be hardware, could be whatever it is. And um, today, they announced Visual Studio Online. Visual Studio Online is basically a, an editor in the web. It's an integrated development environment in the browser that allows software developers to uh, immediately get ready with writing code, developing software, and co collaborating with other software engineers uh, without having to install anything on their local machines. So if you think about that for a little bit, that means that if you own a startup or a big corporate and you want to onboard uh, new team members to your team and have machines ready for them, you don't have to install gigs and gigs and gigs of software. All you have to do is just roll up an instance in the cloud and have that instance ready to push code to a particular source control, like I'm gonna show you in a little bit, and have that instance actually be a collaboration environment for pair programming. You could live share and allow people to come in and be able to look at your code and work with you on your code from a pair programming standpoint. It comes in with a lot of ideas that could actually decrease the cost of uh, software across bigger corporations and help startups you know, push uh, for uh, better software with the least cost possible. So what am I really talking about today? Let's let's go in here and, and roll up a, a new browser. I'm gonna roll up Chrome in here. And I'm gonna go to Visual, I'm gonna search for Visual Studio, Studio if I know how to spell, Studio Online. And if you go to Visual Studio Online, you'll see cloud-powered dev environments accessible from everywhere. Okay, so cloud-powered, okay. So development environments that are accessible from everywhere. So what does that really entail? Uh, let me zoom in here a little bit so people could see uh, on their mobile phones what we're really talking about. If you scroll down a little bit, you could go in here and say, try the browser-based editor. Once you click on that, you can see that uh, you have a pretty much empty um, um, a workspace, right? Uh, obviously, it'll ask you to register and whatnot, but then we could start by creating an environment. So let's go ahead and create an environment. This is a development environment. Let's say we're preparing a, a development environment for a new project. So I'm just gonna go here and call it uh, VSO Awesome. Okay, so VSO Awesome. And I could actually push to a Git repository. So I could go and say Hassan Habib and then VSO Awesome Project. And it's going to require me to authenticate. We'll come back to that one in a little bit. And then I get to choose what instance I want to uh, use. So I could just go with Linux 4 cores for now. Suspend idle environment after 30 minutes. Uh, what does that really mean? As described in VSO Online, rather, you pay for active... Visual Studio Online usage with an, a, a nominal, so only you're paying for the things that are active. You could actually suspend your environment. That's actually awesome. Like this is the complete opposite of a virtual machine because in a virtual machine in the cloud, you pay for it anyway, right? You have to pay for a virtual machine whether it's active or not. But in this case here, you don't actually have to pay for, um, for the environment. You only pay for the active environments. And then in here, you're setting up the 
um, uh, the suspension if you're not touching that environment for 30 minutes it will just idolize itself it just you know just shut itself down so you don't have to pay for it uh, do files do files repositories you know I mean if you know this is I, I never used do files before so I'm not gonna pretend that I know what that is I never used it it's not useful to me I'm a .NET guy I don't know if it, if it has any use with .NET anyway so with the non optional things that we have in here I'm just gonna authenticate with um, with my github account so it's gonna create a github account for me and then I'm gonna authorize so let me go here and authorize you are signed in to github now and you can close this page great so I can close this page and then I just got a message so all right so this is great now what now what do we do uh, repository doesn't appear to exist if it's private oh I probably need to create the environment first let me go in here and just create my environment it's too bad it just doesn't create an environment for me but let's go ahead and do that let's say VSO what did I call it uh, what did I call the project It's VSO awesome so let's go here and say VSO awesome and then let's create that guy all right here's an environment and then let's go here and hopefully this guy well let us if I just refresh it like type it again there you go so now it's happy so now I can actually write code and push it directly to um, to my github now I'm gonna log in to my environments all right so we're logging in and now it's creating an environment now watch this watch this it's creating it's basically Azure reincarnate not in reincarnate it's a, another manifestation of Azure where you uh, spin up development environments right and look how fast this thing is just spin up a development environment literally in about less than 30 seconds right so you could actually roll up a new environment for any new project you don't have to have people buy visual studio you don't have them have download visual studio you don't have them to have um, laptops really if they have if they have tablets that they, that they could attach a keyboard to that would still work for them they'll be still be able to write software through their tablets uh, so let's go into the environment here so once you click on that it opens up a um, a, a what what looks like a VS code right this is VS code uh, it's literally exactly like VS code uh, everything is there and I think a VS code is also built on electron so it's basically a JavaScript based you know so it can be ported to um, a, a web application so easy anyway I'm a C-sharp.net guy so that means what I really want to do I want to install a bunch of extensions right so in the extensions in here I'm just gonna look go look for C-sharp so this is C-sharp I'm gonna install that one and I'm gonna install C-sharp extensions because it makes life so much easier and then I'm gonna reload the environment so once you reload the environment that means everything is ready for you now all we have to do is just start a new .NET Core project because I'm running on Linux. That means um, I can um, I can log in. Let's see what this is. Not signed in. Sign in first. Source Azure account extension. Uh, do you want Code Insiders to open the external website? Sure. What is this? It's asking me to log into my account. You can close that window now. All right. So now I'm logged in. I think. Uh, this down here is my uh, source control. This is master. Uh, let's verify that I'm actually in the right. Uh, uh, let's open new terminal. Let's see if I'm actually um, uh, get uh, origin get uh, uh, what is it get uh, origin dash v something like that. I don't remember. Get list. Your current branch master does not have any commits yet. Okay, so we don't have any commits in here. Great. So let's go and do .NET. Um, .NET and then new console. And what that is going to do, it's going to roll up a new project for me. A new console project for me. Right? So it's like a very basic Hello World program for me. So if I go in here and go to program.cs, you can see here I have a hello world uh, project for me, for me here. So that means if I go into the terminal again and go and say .NET .NET oh, .NET run, 
it should it should run the program for me let's see what does it get required assets to assets to build uh, and debug are missing from workspace add them great so you see how when i did dotnet run it, it it printed out hello world for me all right so let's play with this a little bit so let's go and say uh string um uh, string can i type string string uh, x let's say name equal hassan there you go and then let's do some string interpolation in here uh let's say hello hassan let's see something like this uh or name actually so name hello name so now if i go and say dot net run it should say hello Hassan something like that perfect so now let me commit that code git add and then git commit dash m um, vso init just commit and then git push origin let's see origin it doesn't auto complete for me which really sucks but here we go git, git push origin master when i push that code from the development environment, technically speaking, it should show up in here. So if I refresh that page, my code should show up in here. Here's my code right here. If I go to program.cs, it will say, so as you can see here, you know, from the, uh, the IDE, I can so easily, I wonder if I can zoom, if I can zoom in a little bit in here, because this is probably very hard for people with um phones to be able to see i don't see the option here but uh, there's there's font size let's put that to you know i don't know 30 30 30 would be good right and then your change automatically saved as edit so yeah there you go now you'd be able to see that i don't know if i can actually see okay i don't know if we can actually increase the size on the terminal but this is basically the program that we have here um, now let's look on the side here. You could actually share, uh, you, you know, you could have Remote Explorer. You could look at other environments. You could have a live share right here. So this live share, you could actually, it, it's already in. So if you go to live share, you could actually invite people to join your session and, and, um, and work with you in the environment. It's a very clean way of spinning up environments real quick and have people collaborate with you without you having to install the entirety of larger IDEs and unless you actually need to. Um, one of the biggest time wasters you know that I've ever seen is you know when you have a new team member and uh, on your team and you want them to uh, get up to speed and have the source code so they still so they need to install the software the in the uh, integrated development environment and then install source control with git or you know whatever the technology is and then you want them to get permissions and then clone the code and then build the code and then set up the environment variables and it's just a it's it's a very it's a very not very productive um, uh, activity, right? To wait for a couple of days just to get things up and running. Instead, simply you could s literally spin up environments as you go, and as many environments as you can, and you can shut them down. So it's very cost effective. It's basically cost effective. Um, you know, I I think it's it's great for some particular uses. I don't see myself um, doing um, something like this for some web development, not just yet. You know, because I still want to be able to run something in the browser. I don't know if this would be able to run something in the browser. I haven't tried it yet, but it's definitely worth a shot. You know, to try and run things in the browser. Like if you're developing a Blazor application or a web application. What's that going to look like, right? What's um, what what's it going to look like? What are you going to do with it? You know, where where is this instance is going to be spinning out? There's there's still a lot of things, a lot of questions that need answered uh, when it comes to something like that. But you know, this would be really awesome for probably 
uh, very heavily back-end development environments. You know, if you're building an API, for instance, or uh, if you are just building a file processing application of your, uh, or if you're building something just real quick, just to educate people about a certain aspect of programming, that would be perfect. This environment would be fantastic, especially for students, people in colleges trying to learn about a, a new technology. This is amazing to get things up and running, but I still don't see it something that I could use it yet in a more professional um, environment with with all the bells and whistles that come in with uh, web application development and whatnot. And there are probably some people that are more used to VS Code. I personally use uh, Visual Studio like uh, a lot of people know from my other videos. I use the actual uh, Windows application Visual Studio integrated development environment. It has millions and millions and lines of code and it gets a lot of things done super fast. But I know there's a lot of, there's a whole new generation of uh, uh, C Sharp developers, .NET developers and JavaScript developers that w could do a lot of things with this. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, I really uh, encourage you to try this out. It's a very interesting uh, approach. It's a very uh, cost-effective approach to onboard new team members for new applications. Um, give it a shot and uh, if you have any suggestions, feedback, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Thank you for watching.